now uh, we're gonna analyze the game between Spielman and Herbment and uh, we're gonna see you know uh, this is a short example but uh, we're gonna appreciate a nice uh, middle game and we're gonna focus on that uh, so let's get started uh, white plays e4 black plays e6 white plays d4 black plays d5 and uh, here white plays uh, knight d2 which is the Tarish variation against uh, the French and well you know that white can play knight c3 also and here black has the choice of playing bishop b4 uh, pinning the knight however if we play knight d2 the Tarish here bishop b4 is not making any sense because then we can just play c3 attacking the bishop and then the pin it's over so uh, that is why I like this this move it's quite interesting it's a nice way of defending our center and here black decides uh, to take on e4 which is the Rubinstein variation knight takes e4 and as you can see uh, we already have a stronger center as white and also in the French and in so many openings as black the bishop on c8 happens to be a bad bishop uh, black he's gonna have some trouble um, developing this bishop so here black plays knight d7 his idea is uh, playing knight gf6 um, if he plays knight f6 immediately um, the problem is we can just take and here these two options are just you know so hard to play because if black takes this way uh, then his pawn structure it's really weak his king side it's weak too I mean it's gonna be dangerous if uh, he castles there and if he takes with the queen uh, then the problem is he's bringing the queen out too early and this is against the opening rules uh, here is white we can just play knight of three then we can try to win some uh, opening uh, I mean development tempos by playing bishop g5 bishop d3 black will have to move the queen again uh, this is not recommended so now we know the reason black plays knight d7 he wants to connect his knights and it's also a development move so here we play a knight to f3 black plays knight to f6 and here we have to take I think this is the best option for us uh, I know the knight it's under attack and maybe trading some pieces off it's not a good idea for us because as white we want to get an advantage and sometimes you know trading pieces off you know leads to equality however in this position I think if we move the knight back first of all we are losing the initiative and black is developing for free second of all we are moving the same piece twice in the opening and this is not recommended here black can just play c5 and I think he's punishing our center he's developing so he has uh, good chances of equalizing when we play knight takes f6 we are not losing any tempo as we said uh, if he takes with the pawn or the queen that is too dangerous 
it's much better uh, to take back with the knight on f6 and here we play bishop to d3 I think this is a, a nice move because we are already attacking uh, kingside here and you know if we play something like bishop e2 I guess it's a, it's a bit passive compared to bishop d3 and if we play bishop c4 the thing is uh, this bishop it's not attacking much because uh, the e6 pawn it's defending well and it's blocking our bishop on c4 so it's clear uh, bishop d3 is the best square for our bishop I think uh, black's move here h6 it's it's not the best move because looks like a waste of tempo to me uh, honestly I don't think black needs to stop bishop g5 in that case black can just play bishop e7 and then he's protecting his knight he's also unpinning his knight and I don't think black can afford losing a tempo here with his king in the center without a big development I would just go uh, either c5 here or maybe bishop e7 just to play it safe I mean bishop e7 I castle and then I see how to finish uh, my development as black but I think you know playing h6 here it's definitely uh, a waste of tempo and uh, I like white's idea in this game when he plays queen e2 and in order to understand this we have to understand our middle game plan as well uh, Queen e2 here it's like we're not showing our cards because we're not castling yet that means we can also castle queenside once we know he's gonna castle kingside we can then castle queenside and if kings are in opposite sides it's gonna be much easier to attack at king side so that is why I like Queen e2 we are playing a useful move but we are not deciding yet uh, you know where to castle and by the way we are also placing the Queen in the same file as the King so that is why I, I like this move also black plays the bishop to d6 uh, if I were black I would probably play bishop e7 just to play it safe again you know if we see this from the black point of view we have to remember we are playing black we have to equalize first and I would think about my king's safety first otherwise I can just play c5 right here I can't delay this move too much and hopefully I can get some development and some initiative in the center you know if white takes I can just take with the bishop and I want a development tempo as white I, I would probably consider moving the bishop somewhere and I'm not interested in taking this pawn back I can just castle queenside I speed my development up and I have a lot of threats here such as bishop b5, knight takes d4 just to give you an example here after knight takes d4 we are getting our pawn back and the d file is quite powerful he can play queen d4 because bishop b5 it's just getting the queen so we have a lot of you know interesting possibilities here uh, for white so black plays the bishop to d6 he's developing but as we said uh, as white we're not gonna tell our move yet we can play a useful move like a bishop to d2 and once he castles then we can just castle queenside this is a this is you know a nice strategy because kings are at opposite sides 
it's it's gonna be uh, much much easier to fire an attack at king side because our king is not there we can even consider you know sacrificing the sheep pawn because uh, if black takes it then we are just opening the sheep file for free and that is what we want because his king is there and we'll have a lot of uh, targets at king side too here black decides to develop his bishop via d7 um, I guess he wants to play bishop c6 and somehow get rid of his bishop uh, that would be a nice idea because you know this bishop it's not useful at all black would be happy to play something like bishop c6 and bishop takes f3 but maybe you know this maneuver it's just too slow if I were black I would also consider playing uh, b6 followed by bishop b7 and then we get this uh, powerful diagonal here is white I would still play g4 as we said before uh, because we are one step away from playing g5 and then we are opening king side for free if he plays knight takes g4 apart from rook hg1 which is winning a lot of attacking tempos I also like queen e4 because here we threat queen h7 which is mate we threat the knight on g4 and we also threat the rook on a8 and too many threats are enough to win black can't stop all these threats at once and anyway you know the, the concept of uh, playing g4 and giving this pawn up it's great because as I said if he takes worst scenario we'll have a big compensation here and there are a lot of tricks in this position so I like white's play here especially after bishop d7 in this game white plays knight e5 our idea is to get the bishop pair if possible and also the knight on e5 looks quite aggressive we are also free in this diagonal so playing g4 and h4 it's gonna be much easier and like we said uh, the knight on e5 it's doing pretty well here it's on a good square and it's in the center and I think this is the other mistake black makes in this game uh, maybe it's a little too late to play uh, c5 in this position because if you can see we have a rook on d1 he's got the queen on d8 and we have a lot of pieces uh, in between a lot of targets in between it's gonna be quite clear that if we just open the d file we should have something uh, here in this game black took on e5 uh, just realizing his mistake but if he goes at uh, bishop takes c5 I guess you know here uh, I think uh, maybe white has a big advantage I see an easy way to get an advantage here starting with a uh, knight takes d7 and here black has uh, two options one of them it's playing queen takes d7 and now we need some more pieces I mean to free the d file we can start with bishop takes h6 and when he takes then we can just win by playing uh, bishop h7 and we got the queen what is more this is not enough because here material wise material wise it's kind of equal but queen d3 is just getting the knight on d7 too and if he goes uh, knight takes d7 worst scenario we can play queen e4 and we have a big attack also the bishop pair here you know 
we have a big advantage maybe one day playing something like bishop takes h6 becomes a possibility as well so I, I don't like this for black but you know taking on e5 can't be better because here we just have an extra pawn and we still have a much better position because of the bishop pair so if black doesn't create any counterplay soon he's gonna be losing he tries uh, by playing bishop c6 and I think that bishop c6 you know apart from uh, attacking the she2 pawn I think you know he wants to stop she4 because then the h1 rook it's under attack so in this game white decides to go bishop f4 I think we can just go f3 as well which is interesting because we are blocking this bishop's diagonal here white plays aggressive by playing uh, bishop f4 but this is a nice way of defending too because now we threat bishop h7 check and then we can just uh, get the queen on d8 so this is very powerful um, black plays queen e7 we just play queen d4 we still create some threats like bishop d6 queen e3 was a mistake because of knight d5 and black is in the game again creating some threats and probably taking the, the c5 pawn later so queen d4 it's much easier we still defend the c5 pawn and bishop d6 becomes a threat and also a good blockader of the d file queen e8 um, rook c1 as we can see uh, our attack it's uh, quite powerful uh, and all we need to do here to win the game it's you know open that position up black tries at playing b6 this is one of his last tries in this position we just unpin our queen with queen h4 he takes and here comes the interesting part of this game I think that if we play bishop takes c5 then we should be winning in the long run but maybe black has some counterplay because uh, you know he's got two open files in front of our king I don't think this is enough though but you know here we can appreciate how strong white is playing when he plays bishop to e5 we are not paying attention to material but his king and we are also stopping uh, uh, rook d4 because the bishop is there you know this diagonal it's quite quite powerful black plays queen e7 and we just push uh, c4 c5 it's coming next and our bishop pair it's gonna be quite powerful uh, black tries to deviate our bishop from the action we can take on c4 although I don't like it because we are playing in black's camp and the other reason is if we just push c5 here our position it's gonna be uh, much much easier to play we have such a strong attack here if he takes on d3 then we can just take on f6 we have a lot of threats and it's over if he plays d2 check we can just move the king and we are still winning um, if he takes here well I think this is winning too you know we have a lot of threats he can stop all this so here black plays knight to d7 so we can think uh, you know we made a mistake as white because this bishop is under attack so is the bishop on d3 we can see that the she5 pawn is pinned however white saw this powerful move which is winning immediately first of all we threat queen takes she7 mate if black takes the knight takes with the knight on e5 to stop queen she7 then queen h7 
and then we made him on h8 and if black takes the queen which is the other option we can just take and again we'll see the power of our bishops plus the rook and the pass pawn king f8 well here we can see that h7 it's probably winning however this rook c8 it's faster and it's beautiful too because the only move it's king takes and after h7 check only move again it's king here and promoting a queen on a rook or a rook it's just mating so we had you know a very nice example here uh, black uh, made some mistakes he was delaying c5 too much but anyway uh, it was great to see how white played with the bishop pair and the attack at kingside thank you